Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rob Barrington from BridgeLesson.com coming to you live from New York City this week. And I'm here to give you the analysis from the Saturday Bridge Base game that we played on June 12th of 2021. Uh, you can play in this game every single week if you're available 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if, a little before that, if you go on Bridge Base and look in the competitive free tournaments, you'll be able to find it there and play along with us. This video will be more meaningful you meaningful for you afterwards so let's jump in and see the decisions that uh, were going to be made this past saturday and we're looking on with board number one as the south player we see that our partner opened one diamond right hand opponent over called one spade and we're deciding what to do with this hand what would you do if this was your decision what did they do at your table if you already played this this is between bids, really. You have two reasonable choices. They are two diamonds and three diamonds. Let me just check off a couple of things that you might have been thinking about in this chair. Uh, first things first, if you play something called inverted minor suit raises, they don't exist in competitive auctions. So one diamond past two diamonds would usually be 10 or more points in kind of the modern bidding methods. However, when it goes one diamond something, right, double or one of a suit or any bid here, the inverted minor suit raise is gone. In fact, if you wanted to make a good raise here, you would be making a cubit, right? That's how we would show 10 or more points and support for partner suit in any competitive auctions, right? We're going to be cubiting a suit that the opponents may have bid in these auctions, right? So that's how we would show our good hands. So whenever we have that bid available, the Q-bid, we also have the preemptive family member here, right? We, we When we have a Q-bid available, we actually have a preemptive raise available also, right? So here, the jump raise would be preemptive. And the range of this is usually around four to seven points. And you might look at this hand and say, that's it's kind of close to the top end and you're right, right? This is, uh, maybe sometimes too good for a preemptive raise, but it's so close. And look at the quality of these seven points. Like if those two queens are an ace instead, I would be way more likely to uh, go the, the better route, meaning bid two diamonds. But now my range is like six to nine-ish, and then I can bid two and then three, right? Make a competitive auction out of that. Uh, when it's close though, I can give you just a really good tip. It is much better, usually if it's very close, to just pre preempting because right? you're you're doing two things right you're you're making one bid and you're chewing up enough room that you are making it more difficult for your opponents to deal with now i'm not saying you want to preempt with really good hands obviously it's not that sort of you know hey we just want to be preempting so often but when it's close when you're deciding between a simple raise and a preempt if they qualify for both, I would be preempting just more often. Right? It's going to make it much tougher for them. And we'll see West choice next and the difference between the two bids. Let's take a look at that. So West over here would have probably made a Q bid if we had bid two diamonds, right? We They would have been able to bid three diamonds saying, hey, partner, I have a good raise of your spade suit. And they certainly do. But when we bid three diamonds, we deprive them of that descriptive opportunity, right? They can't choose between, hey, do I qubit, do I raise? Uh, here, they're just saying, okay, well, I'm going to bid three, and I don't even know if it's right to bid four because I didn't have time to describe my hand, and I don't know what partner's hand is. That one spade over call by East is eight to 17, right? So West can't know that East has this nice hand for them over there. But as it turns out, when you look at this, the spades don't break. So really, the par result on this board is is four diamonds for the north south players and what i mean by par is let's say that you know we can see all the hands like we can here if it goes three spades by west right we can see that it looks like that's the contract that east west can make right they're gonna lose a spade right they can't avoid that they'll lose a club a diamond and a heart right there four losers on this hand uh which means that's plus 140 for east and west uh the north south pair can lose four tricks and diamonds so they can also take nine tricks and diamonds so how we determine a par result is we would say okay north would bid four diamonds and east west might double that even but only going down one is minus 100 for north south so if we could see all the hands uh, north would bid four diamonds, east west would double, knowing they can't make four spades, and that's where they would play it. However, uh, we don't live in that world, right? We live in a world of imperfect information always, so we don't know what's going on. North is 
most likely just going to be bidding four diamonds here. And, and the reason is they know partner made a preemptive raise of diamonds, which is going to show usually five or more in that suit. So they can see, well, I'm probably going to take those two aces, maybe, right? Maybe I would, don't even get the ace of diamonds in a situation like this, right? But I, I certainly want to be kind of taking the contract away from them if it looks like they're likely to make spades and we're not likely to go down too much in this diamond suit, right? So this is more of like a sacrificial type bid. And now East would be passing most likely. It's tough to be bidding four spades with this sort of hand. And then when it gets back to West, they'll have a difficult decision. And it's again, because we've, we've muddied the waters with the three diamond bid, right? The three diamond bid makes it so much more difficult for West to handle an auction like this as they move forward. And you couldn't blame West for just bidding four spades thinking, well, my goodness, I have this singleton Jack. That's gotta be good for us. I have a second five card suit. We have a nine card fit. It's very tough for them to figure out like what is right what's wrong and also you know the urges of a bridge player we ah, I can't they're stealing from us we don't want to let them take it away so you wouldn't be surprised to see some pairs and I'll, I'll take a look at the results later some pairs might just be playing four spades down one and if if you had this auction for myself you you clouded the the uh waters enough to kind of make it difficult for them i think this is just a difficult hand in general i would you would hope that some people played three spades you would also hope that north south uh, would do just slightly better than that and take it to the four level and really put the tough decision to the east-west players. So that's a good starting hand. Lots of meat on that one. Let's jump to the second board, number two here. Okay, hand number two. Uh, you're the dealer. Make your call with this hand. What do you bid with this hand? And the, the reason I have this out here is just to draw a line for all of you that might not be familiar with this one. You always open a diamond. No matter what the quality of those minor suits are, we're dealing with a numbers issue when we're talking about opening minor suits. So here's the rule. When we're 3-3 three, three in the minors, we open one club always. Right? When we're 4-4 four, four or better, we open one diamond. Right? So this is just so when we open a diamond, partner's going to put us on a four card holding always, right? We may not have them in the, the very rare circumstance where we're four, four in the majors, but at least when we do it this way, we are almost always gonna have four in that suit. So that's the start to this hand is one diamond. And when it starts this way, we'll see the auction proceed in a pretty straightforward manner. Let's take a look. So it should just proceed this way. East is gonna open a diamond. Uh, West will bid one heart right? Just the, the normal response. North is just parked out of this auction. It's funny. Uh, if it went a club of spade, North would have a very perfect uh, takeout double, right? But you, you can't control what happens in front of you. This is a very nice hand for the North player that has no bid. And it has no bid pretty much for the entire auction. Uh, we're hoping they get into trouble and we get to take some tricks that way. Uh, but East is going to bid one no trump. Balanced 12 to 14, right? At the top of that range. But that's exactly what we're going to show. And now West is going to have a choice here. I, I would just be passing, right? I, two clubs would be new minor forcing for West, and it's not quite good enough unless you find a fit. If you find a hard fit, I mean, your hand is certainly much better. For the times where you don't find a hard fit, you're going to maybe be too high already with this nine count, two aces and a jack, not too terrible. But uh, if you did go the extra mile here and bid new minor forcing, you would have seen two clubs pass. And now East would just jump to three no Trump very likely. Uh, here they would be saying, okay, I don't have a heart fit, but I'm a maximum, right? My partner's making at least an invitational bid. And you're not going to love that as the West player. You have nine high card points. And high card points are the important ones in no Trump, right? Because we're only dealing with tricks. Either that or you have a long suit that is going to provide a lot of extra tricks. The hard suit certainly isn't going to do that, especially when partner only has two of them, right? So, so here it's best to just kind of go the low route, right? And just sit back and let partner play one no Trump. Uh, if East went kind of the... The different route and instead of bidding a no trump they bid two clubs you were rewarded with a heck of a nice fit to find right you you end up getting to maybe your best spot on this one but again i think this is the best auction and you should just be playing one no trump as the east player and you you will not have very much difficulty taking tricks on this hand it's a very simple four club tricks for sure one heart trick 
and then you will take a successful spade finesse for three tricks in that suit, right? They're not going to be able to take enough tricks before you're able to do that for the tricks that you need to be successful. All right, let's take a look at number three, guys. Three is a challenging one. It's, it's an interesting deal. Uh, we'll see a pass uh, to start this. Two passes, really. Uh, West has a hand they kind of want to come in with later, right? They, they'd they like to hear a diamond bid or maybe a spade bid so they can make a Michaels bid. Uh, but at this point, it goes pass, pass, and North should be preempting 100% of the time. Look at the system go situation here. We are not vulnerable, right? And, and the opponents are. We're in third chair, two passes to us, and we only have an eight count, right? So don't look at this and say, well, that suit's not good enough. This is one of those seats and vulnerability positions where you open your range to include these bad preempts, right? We we would probably preempt this anywhere, to be honest. But if even if the hand's a little worse, we might back off in earlier chairs or in different vulnerabilities, whereas here in third chair, non-vulnerable, let's dance right so two diamonds is for sure and now uh east will have a very reasonable two no trump overcall right recognize something at this point some of you see two diamonds and you think oh two no trump is it's that bid that is unusual right they're showing the other suits no 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 we must have the ability to show a good balanced hand when the opponents have preempted right so when they've preempted our auction we need the ability to show these good hands and we also need to recoup that system that we have when we actually overcall natural no trumps and that's what will happen here east can bid two no trump showing 15 to 18 balanced with a diamond stopper right and now we have to see if south is going to get into the mix and they should, right? I would just bid three diamonds with the south hand, right? This is not the worst possible call. You're just preempting the auction further, and you're getting in the way of the system that east-west might have. If you pass with the south hand, west will have an easy transfer. I think they'll bid three diamonds, and then that should be the end of it. West has a, just a bizarre decision when it gets to them as well. But let's say, let's say south does a very good job, and, and, uh, preempts one further step right they 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 say okay i'm going to further this preempt take a look at west what would you do with the west hand what did they do at your table it's a sick hand it's really nice but it has some downside right so the one thing that west knows that is isn't awesome is that is that their partner has some points and diamonds they would honestly prefer partner has no points and diamonds right uh because they're void so so here kind of a good news bad news but here it, the hand is too good to let the opponents kind of be stealing like this so the question is how do we navigate these waters to get partner to the correct spot and hopefully let partner play it uh three hearts would just be natural and forcing here um so would four clubs right we, we would certainly want to show hearts the the call that some of you might not have thought about that could have been best here is four diamonds um if you agreed that this could still be a Texas transfer, that would be great. The problem with this is it's, it shouldn't be, right? The, the Texas transfer should always be a jump, right? So don't get confused here. Here, we're just back to kind of natural stuff. Uh, and the problem with four hearts is his partner going to take that as a transfer, what's going on. So really, the, the best call is probably just three hearts. And then if partner bids three, no Trump, just bid four clubs right give partner some options uh you only have a six count so you you playing at a higher level is based on your shape right so here you'll give partner the chance and partner will just bid four hearts right now you can see they have four of them you're destined to play hearts as long as you offer it up in some way uh let's be clear though if south did not bid three diamonds now west gets to transfer and bid three diamonds and east gets to bid three hearts and and west can decide what to do next either bid four clubs or just kick it into four hearts okay so that would kind of get it on the right side of the table but either way uh we should be able to make four hearts from either side of the table here right we're just going to lose three clubs basically <laughs> that's all we're going to lose all right let's take a look at number four so on board four we see uh the flip side of of the preemptive spectrum right so at this point i have a sitting in the west player's chair and you can see that this player is the dealer and the colors are everyone's vulnerable everyone's red 
this is a preempt that I wouldn't consider in any situation. Right, uh, the, the vulnerability is terrible. Right, it's the worst case. Not not the worst case, but still, anytime you're vulnerable, it's bad. Right? You're you're going for a higher number when you go down. Suit's terrible. The shape is terrible. Right, so here, if I were in third seat, white versus red, or non-vulnerable versus vulnerable, I might still open two diamonds. In fact, I probably would. Right, it, the difference in position is so huge. Here, first position, vulnerable. We're never considering it. Right, even though the suit here is technically slightly better probably than the last one we saw. Right, so no chance we're bidding with this one. Let's jump in and see the rest of the hands here. Uh, the auction should be pretty straightforward as long as North opens one spade, right? This is an 11 count, but guys, take a look at this hand, right? Use the rule of 20 if you need to. Add 11 to the total number of cards in your two longest suits, which are your majors, nine cards comes to 20 or more you open right so that builds in some normal aggression for shapely type hands for you guys to open up your ranges and here honestly it's not ace king ace ace king in one suit ace in another but it's two aces and king fifth of a major if you're not bidding with this hand i don't know what i can do to convince you to get in there but it's super important that you open a spade in situations like this uh East is going to pass. South is going to know two things. They're going to know we have game. They're going to know it's in spades. Uh, they have no bid that will communicate that right away because Jacoby Tuno Trump requires a four card raise. So here, this is always a two stepper, which is pretty good. We want, we get to show our six card club suit anyway. So we game force two over one. And now North will bid two hearts, right? Patterning their handout, show your shape in response to partners two over one. Perfect. And now South will just say, okay, we now know we're playing spades, right? We're in a game force, we're playing spades. North, uh, with a relative minimum, does have extra values now, though, because that shortness in diamonds is pretty good. Um, they can choose to to do multiple things at this point. They can just bid three spades, right? I wouldn't jump to four. I don't think this hand is a total minimum now. When I have a fit, that shortness in diamonds becomes better, right? So three spades is fine. You don't necessarily want to make a control bid. Uh, but now South can bid, you know, four clubs, four diamonds, you might have some sort of control sequence, but to be honest, you don't really want it being slammed on the sand. It's kind of a lucky make of six. You need clubs to break evenly and spades to behave in a way uh, on this hand uh, to make even game, right? You're, you're going to have to lose a couple of hearts in a club if clubs don't break evenly and they bled a heart initially. Um, you can see the East-West players have an 11 card diamond fit, but they're never going to do anything with it because nobody should be preempting on the sand. So I would guess all of you played four spades and you probably made seven. Just because you made seven, guys, doesn't mean you should be in it. It's a very lucky make, right? It needed, it needed the clubs to break evenly for sure. And it certainly needed the spades to be, you know, breaking normally. So don't worry if you make too many tricks. Uh, definitely worry if you can claim 13 tricks and you're only in four, right? If, if that's that clear without seeing the other opponent's cards, that's for sure. But here I think all of you would see the dummy and say, whoa, I might lose two hearts in a club on this one. Or if spades don't break, oh my goodness, I might lose two hearts a club and a spade. Not a slam you necessarily want to be in. All right, let's take a look at number five. Okay, so number five, I just I want to talk about the north hand first, and, and then we'll go through what was likely the auction uh, at your tables. Um, I, I would always be opening the north hand, uh, which is the dealer on board number five. Uh, one no trump. I have a very good 14, and I have a nice five-card side suit. Right? So here, when I have 14, I will upgrade this pretty frequently and open one no trump. I would guess that most of you open the diamond, though. Uh, if you open a no trump, that is very good. You might have preempted the opponents out of the auction. East-West should definitely get in, though, with East, hopefully, if they have it available, showing both major suits. And then, you know, you might get to the wrong major here. If you do show just spades, you'll get to the right spot. Uh, as you see, if you open a diamond, it's going to be very simple for them to find their major suit fit. Right? It's going to go a diamond, a spade immediately. And we're not going to double with this one. We have a five-card spade suit. Uh, South is going to have another beautiful preemptive race. And then West will have to decide whether or not to get in here, right? They might just bid three spades to show support for partner suit. And they can maybe steal this contract and play some spades. North South can also be 
uh, competing in diamonds as well, just like the hand we saw earlier. It's important that the south hand, especially on this one, preempts, right? This is only five points, right? Six points if you count the doubleton here. So this is a hand that is just perfect to be preempting, and it makes it way more difficult for the opponents to deal with. Right, so so here a diamond, a spade, three diamonds makes West decision way harder. Uh, a diamond, a spade, two diamonds. West has a nice, easy two spade bid, and then they get to establish their fit right here. Maybe you convince them to pass, probably not. Right, but you did your best, and here North will decide whether to compete. Probably not in this one, being vulnerable, and also they have three aces in their hand, so they're not going to think it's super great to be kind of continuing to the four level. So East West can just play some spades on this hand, and on perfect defense, they might not be making this one. Right? They actually develop a club rough on this particular hand. Uh, if this South player here leads a club initially. It can go ace of clubs, club. And then when North gets in with a spade, maybe they can get a club rough and then take a heart at some point as well. So interesting hand that doesn't make three spades, but it requires kind of a, a, a pretty, not necessarily double dummy defense, but you certainly aren't necessarily going to just lead this small doubleton with three small trumps on this one. It would take kind of a, an inspired defense, let's put it that way, to beat this hand. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at number six. Number six is uh, is a hand that you you wish was set up differently, especially if you're sitting south or west. Uh, so south and west have clearly the the standout hands on this, and they're going to be competing against each other. Uh, it's going to start pretty normally, right? East is going to pass. South is going to open a club. Uh, not no reason to open a diamond. In fact, we're going to. We, we plan to reverse after our partners likely one spade bid. At least that's what we'd be thinking as a South player. But we're disappointed because it goes a hard on our left. North has a has the shape for a negative double, right? So North, North could double here to show their four-card spade suit, but they don't have the values for it, right? They they have a two-count with a singleton. Okay, <laughs> good luck, right? So so North is passing. Uh, East is going to pass as well. There's no reason to get in with this hand. Uh a bid wouldn't be forcing by East, but it would still show a good hand, right? So if you considered bidding a spade with East, you showed values, right? You don't have values. So again, you're out of this one. And South usually would be a reopening double in this situation. In fact, if West bid spades, they would clearly be doubling here to kind of reopen the auction and give partner a chance to play for penalty. But when you have Ace, 10, 9, third of their suit, and a really good hand, you don't necessarily have to go that route. And doubling might convince partner you you have spades, so we don't want to be doing that. We can make the reverse we were planning on making. It's a little, might seem a little bit stretchy considering partner passed one heart, but are we really going to just sit back and let them play one heart without describing our hand? So at this point, bidding two diamonds is fine. West doesn't care what you do. West is just going to continue to bid hearts. And now partner or the North player on this on this auction can decide to get in there and say, well, oh, well, you you hit me the second time around, right? Now North knows that they have a likely nine card diamond fit and North has shortness in the opponent's suit that they're bidding. West is going to be very aggressive with their competition. In fact, some Wests might have just gone kind of off the deep end and just jumped to four hearts on this end, which uh, is just a bit much in, in this sort of environment. but. If, you, if you're if you looking at the hand, it's going to be really difficult to just let the opponents play at the three level, especially in a suit that you're avoiding. So what, I mean, even vulnerable here, West is definitely going to continue to to compete in this one. And, uh, and we will see when they give it up. North-South could push them a little bit too high when they're not necessarily willing to bid four hearts. And honestly, East-West will get very lucky because look at the one card that partner has in the East player's hand. That is amazing. Not just the one card, but the position in the suit as well. They have an amazing source of tricks and dummy with the queen fit the spades opposite ace king third. So it's a heck of a great holding for partner. Not only does it give entry to the hand, it provides pitches, right? So the opponents are going to have to like cash out at some point. They'll take a club and, and a heart and that'll be it. Right. So it's kind of a, a hand where if North-South gets too frisky with their competitive uh, juices, they might push East-West into four hearts, or West specifically. Um, if you played a part score in hearts, you, you were rewarded with, you know, obviously, uh, 10 or 11 tricks as well.
All right, but if you if you pushed them as the north south players, you might have gotten them to a game they weren't willing to bid, and they get a little lucky on the lay of the cards. Uh, diamonds only makes let's see, yeah, you can only make about nine or ten tricks depending on which side you're playing it on. Uh, and and here that is just not going to be enough, especially if we push them into bidding that four heart game that they might not bid if we don't let them. All right, let's take a look at number seven. And on seven, I have a starting as the East player. So we are sitting East. Our partner opened one diamond. We responded one heart. And now partner bid one spade. Make your call, guys. What do you bid with this hand? If you played, what did you do or what did your opponents do on board seven? As the South, or excuse me, as the East player here. <laughs> one diamond by partner, one heart by us, one spade. The correct answer is fourth suit forcing. Right. This is very important because we have to make sure we make a bid that partner cannot pass while also investigating where our best strain is. The, the reason we play things like this, fourth suit forcing, which is game forcing, and also uh, its cousin, new minor forcing, when partner rebids a no trump, which was also a possibility on the set. Right? These are the bids we need to have to be able to say, okay, I, I know we have some values, right? In this case, I know we have enough to play game. I'm just not sure where that is. Tell me more about your hand. And now when we jump over to the other side of the table, and I'm going to sit us as the West player now, uh, when we get over here, we'll see how the auction looks from our side of the table. When we're responding to fourth suit forcing, we're looking at two things and two things only from this player's perspective. Do we have three card support for the major partner bid originally? If we do, we would bid two hearts right here. And we don't. The second question is, do we have a stopper in the fourth suit? And I would say just barely. Here's what I'll tell you. Queen 10 third, I would count as a stopper in a suit. Queen empty third, like queen seven third, queen five third, you know, bad cards, no 10 is not a stopper, or at least is, is, is not a stopper I would be super happy with, right? It's a protected honor. It's just super vulnerable to a ton of different card positions by the opponents, right? So here, having a stopper, we would bid two no trump. If we had neither, we just make whatever bid is the most logical. Here it would be two diamonds. And, and that would say, hey, partner, I'm not showing any extra diamonds or anything else about my shape. I'm just denying three hearts and a stopper in clubs. But here, having a stopper in clubs would default us to bidding two no trump. And now when I just reveal all the hands, we can see that uh, the East player's uh, decision is super easy now, right? They can see, okay, I was trying to see if we had a hard fit. We did not. And now I can just get us to 3 no Trump, and that's where we will play this one. Uh, it's kind of a nice lay of the cards again. Uh, the heart finesse wins, and the hearts are dividing evenly. So on this hand, you just really can do a ton of damage considering all of these things are working for you the only card that's really not working for you is the queen of diamonds right but here if you if you're just somewhat careful uh you can take all five hearts three spade tricks at least and if they pitch a spade from the north player's hand you're going to get one of those at least a club and a couple of diamonds. you're going to take a whole bunch of tricks on board number seven so if you played three no trump maybe getting all 12 but take a look again guys this one's even sicker than the one we saw before just because you can take 12 or 13 tricks doesn't mean it's great and here the reason is everything's working and they're dividing the suits are dividing evenly and the and the honors are in the right spots you can't get more friendly than that all right let's see number eight folks so eight is a board that you could potentially play a slam on but i would say almost all of you just played three no trump which is perfectly reasonable on the set uh it turns out that six diamonds is a heck of a good slam uh but the auction is going to start one spade, two diamonds for sure, right? The South player knows it as game. Uh, it's not sure where yet. It could be hearts, right? It could be diamonds. It could be no trump. Who knows? It could even be spades. Right? We're not ruling anything out. We're just making our game forcing bid. Uh, North is just supposed to raise to three diamonds. Remember, when we're responding to two over one, like one spade, two diamonds here, we're trying to show our shape the best way possible. This would show that, right? This would show a four card diamond race, which is interesting. It it might excite the South player to, to start exploring slam and diamonds because look at this hand. We have two quick tricks 
in clubs. We have one quick trick in hearts. We have five diamonds and partner is, is showing four or more here when they raise. And we're short in our partner's first suit. So we might be able to set that up for tricks. Hands like this do play quite well when, when we have a nice fit in a suit. Uh, however, I would say most of you probably just bid three no Trump at this point. <laughs> which is reasonable. I'm not saying that's wrong. Uh, a, a more expert partnership might make a different call with the South player's hand and then proceed past 3 no Trump to try to explore Slam and Diamonds. But that's not without risk either because you might be just proceeding past your best possible game. Uh, I would say unless it's super clear for you guys to 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 understand, hey, we have enough for Slam, to just be disciplined and try to get to your spot where you're likely just to make the contract. Uh, in, in the most efficient way. Uh, as you can see, if you did raise diamonds or find a way to kind of communicate your slam interest in diamonds, you would have been rewarded. But again, not necessarily going to get you a massive result. I would guess if you got there, you were maybe one of the only ones that did. Right? So being in 3 no Trump going plus 660 or 460 in this case, is it, isn't too bad of a consolation prize. All right, guys, let's take a look at number nine. And here, as the North player, there is a 14 count that never gets upgraded, right? We saw a hand earlier where I discussed opening one no trump, and that was when we had 14 and a good five-card suit, uh, in, and I believe it was in the diamond suit in that hand as well, right? So in that case, upgrading because we have a reason to, right? We have a source of tricks, five cards or longer. Uh, we're going to upgrade in these spots here. This is a downgrade, to be honest, when we're flat four three 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 and here we have exactly 14 never ever upgrading here we don't do it for silly reasons we make our normal bids and after it goes a diamond pass a heart uh west will pass right they can't really make a call even though they may have the best hand or they certainly have an opening hand uh, we can't overcall a spade that's going to be five plus and double would show clubs and spades, so we don't want to convince partner we have both of those suits. It's okay just to pass, and maybe we get a bid later. Uh, North has the default rebid. I am balanced 12 to 14. I bid a no trump. And that's where this auction should end, guys. And, and it'll be an interesting contract because it's kind of a split deck hand, and it can go either way in these spots. Uh, I would say that East has a choice of leads. That's pretty interesting. I would just lead top of nothing, most likely, right? Because it went a diamond, a heart, and North bid a no trump. This no trump bid doesn't necessarily deny four spades, but I would say it makes the four card spade suit super unlikely. So here, a top of nothing lead would start the defense out pretty well, right? They would be able to develop three of their spade tricks right off the bat. They can get two clubs in the ace hearts. The question is, can North South get to seven before East West? And I guess the results will tell that story, guys. Uh, Double dummy style, I would guess North South can uh, just squeak out seven tricks with uh, with at least three of those diamond tricks, and then it looks like three hearts and just a random extra trick in spades or clubs would do the trick here. So again, these hands are these are the toughest contracts because the points are distributed evenly, right? You expect these to go the way they do unless there's some super long source of tricks on the hand for one side or the other, right? When we have half the deck in each of the hands, you expect to take six or seven tricks with each of those hands. That's why it's tough. All right, let's see number 10. So this is what the start of board 10 should look like. Uh, South is going to clearly start with one diamond they have a nice two suitor uh, excuse, <laughs> one, diamond, one spade with their nice two suitor and it's gonna go past north has a two over one bid and the luxury of knowing that they have an eight card or longer spade fit already uh in these situations we may in fact end up playing hearts uh if partner raises our, our two heart bit right so this, this is one of those times where we we know we have a major suit fit we can't raise spades directly again for the thing we discussed earlier uh we need four to make the jacoby tuno trump raise so here this is always a two-stepper right we're gonna game force with our two over one and now if we see three hearts we'll conceal our spade fit and just uh treat this as a hard hand but as you can see south is going to rebid their second five card suit uh these are always tough spots and, and some pairs kind of change their their uh, agreements in these situations but when we're in a two over one auction and we have to bid at the three level we're chewing up a little bit of room but honestly we have to describe this shape 
And in any situation, we're going to do that. Now North shows their delayed support for spades, which is three cards. Now South is deciding what to do. This hand is too good just to bid four spades. I would say the shape is excellent. We can make a drive towards slam by just bidding four clubs. And this is a control bid. All right? This doesn't say, hey, I have a fifth club. Not at all. Don't get confused here. This just says, okay, I know we're in a game force because you bid two over one. I also know that we have a spade fit because you just showed it. So now I'm showing you that I have first or second round control in the clubs. And I'm interested in maybe exploring a higher than game contract. Uh, North should be pretty happy about this and should want to cooperate. And they can do that by just showing a control of their own. Uh, we bid our controls off the line, which means the lowest available bid will show control. And if we go past that, we will deny it. So if North bid four hearts, let's say, they would be denying a diamond control and showing a heart control. So here they have to show their diamond control. That's not going to solve South's position. South has two small hearts, right? Still super worried about that, even with partner bidding that suit. So now South will sign off in four spades. And now North will have to decide whether it's right to take the reins and explore. I would say they probably will, assuming that a lot of things are good for them. The club shortness is really good, especially if partner doesn't have first round control and not second. The heart suit could be a heck of a good source of tricks, right? So, so here, you cannot blame North for actually key carding. And now South will show two key cards with the queen. They have the ace of spades and the ace of clubs and the queen of their trump suit. And now we know we have all five key cards. You could bid five no trump, I suppose, and see if partner has the king of hearts or something like that and to make your bid. But you will find none of that, and that could be your contract. It does make, uh, you may, in fact, even be able to lose a trump trick on this one and still make it, uh, considering that the heart finesse is on, right? So not necessarily the easiest hand to deal with, but a hand that can make 12 tricks, uh, but not 13 on, on best defenses. All right, let's take a look at the last two boards, number 11 and 12. Okay, so this is a this is a wild guess of uh, of the auction that that would occur at board 11. Now, South is is the one that is the dealer in this hand. They're clearly passing. West is going to open a heart, just as obvious, right? Opening their higher ranking five card suit. North is going to find it real hard to resist bidding two clubs. <laughs> don't bid a no trump here. Uh, this isn't, we don't upgrade our overcalls, right? Our no trump overcalls should be solid 15s to 18s. Uh, so here we want to have a six card club suit, but we also don't want to give up the opportunity to bid with what might be the best hand at the table. And it has a lot going for it, right? So here, this is one of those times where it is certainly okay to enter the auction with this quality of a suit, even though it's not six cards, we're at the top of our range or near the top of it solid 14 and now it comes down to east what should east do there there are two bids that i would say we saw the most and maybe a third we didn't see enough of uh I, I, some of you probably just raised hearts directly to some number uh maybe even four hearts which is preemptive and bad uh others of you maybe bid two spades to show your 10 or more points and your five card spade suit as uh, a problem with that and, and it exists when South preempts aggressively in clubs, right? What if you haven't shown your heart fit right away and partner's making a bid at the four level next? Not the best way to kind of communicate your your best fits right away and, and be able to kind of keep the opponents at bay with their preemptive bid. So here, the best choice is the Q-bid, guys. Hey, partner, I have an invitational hand or better, at least 10 or more points, unlimited, could be super, super strong. And I have a fit for the suit that you just showed, hearts. Right, so here, even with the secondary spade suit, we want to show our heart suit and our support immediately because not only do we get to show support, we get to show at least our invitational values on this one. All right, so now when we bid three clubs, our partner's just going to bid a game, right? They're going to say, okay, opposite at least your 10 points, I can make game because now that I know I have a fit, my void is going to be really nice for us. And here it's likely just to go all pass and we will sit back and play four hearts on this end. This should have been a very easy make for those of you that were in four hearts. You can actually take, I believe, 12 tricks on this one because of, once again, the very friendly distribution of the cards. I have to say, not every bridge game uh, is this friendly. And this was random. I did not adjust these in any way. But I have to say, you were you were surprised as the Claire with how well things went today or at least you should have been uh, with these finesses just 
just working so well for you in a lot of these spots. But uh, here, four hearts, 12 tricks probably doing pretty well for, for plus four, 480 there. All right, last chance to excel. Number 12 is next. And this is a, another weird spot for one of the players. South has uh, an opening hand and, and no bid uh, after it goes a spade past a no trump. Uh, if it went a heart past a no trump, they have the perfect takeout double. But uh, here, wrong bids, right? So again, when you have a good hand, doesn't mean you have to bid, especially when you've been deprived of the opportunity to open the bid. The thing that gets most people in these spots or confuses most people is this is a hand we would always open. Right? So we think because we would have opened the bidding that when they open in front of us, we must act to tell partner, hey, we were going to do the same. We don't have to, right? And in fact, a lot of you are realizing now, or I hope you are, that when you delay your action, your other bids are way more clear for you when it gets back. Let's say, let's say they get to some hard contract because like two hearts all pass to us. Now we might be able to double to show our other two suits or different situations, be able to kind of communicate our hand better if we delay it, right? So here, no rush, don't worry. They're not stealing. They're just describing their hands as well. And on this auction, we're going to see them probably default to playing in two spades. The auction's going to go two hearts right they're going to show their four card heart suit and then east is going to say okay well i do not really have a fit or we don't really have a fit so i want to get us to what our best possible spot is at the lowest available level so with this nine count they are not they are definitely not going to suggest diamonds they don't have enough cards in the suit they would need a six card suit to be able to do that so here they're just going to say okay partner of the two suits you showed me I prefer the first one because I know that one's five and that means we have a five two fit versus the four card hard suit possibly giving us only a four three fit. When we have seven card fits, guys, we play in the five two versus the four three as often as we can. That's the better position. It's safer, less likely to get tapped out in those trump suits, which cause disasters as I'm sure a lot of you have seen. So here, it should have just been a pretty reasonable two spade contract if south gets frisky here and they shouldn't look at the vulnerability but if they do let's say they double now they're taking the opponents out of a contract where they should know they are unlikely to have a spade fit and into a contract where we might not have a fit it is so important as the south player on this hand not just because of the colors the vulnerability but because of the fact that when you see a force and no trump auction and one of the players take a preference that usually means they're not fitting. If they're not fitting, what does that suggest about our cards between our two players? It suggests that we are quite potentially not fitting as well. So we don't wanna come into the three level and take a minus score when maybe defending two spades is our best. It's obviously a lot easier on this one because we can see it's unlikely this hand's going to want to be with queen fourth of spades, but just in general, right? When you see this auction competing or balancing, especially with the North players cards, is so off the table because here they haven't found it. They're scrambling, right? They're trying to bail out at a spot that might not be great for them. So don't take them out of that spot yourselves. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining this week. If you played, um, uh, congratulations to the victors. And if you did not win or do well, don't worry. This is practice, guys. This is how we get better at the game. We have to take some lumps here and there. And as long as we're making our decisions, these analysis will mean much more to you because you've already kind of been through the thought process yourself. So hope you're getting a lot out of this, guys. And I will either see you next week in the bridgelesson.com classes that are up for the rest of the summer, or I will see you at the table next Saturday, guys. Take care.